this is Carrie, Christ Center Counselor and Life Coach with Promised Coaching. And I wanna share how important it is to go no contact from the narcissistic abuser and why this is so important in being able to gain clarity and begin healing from the narcissistic abuse. And I know I've talked a little bit about this in some of my other videos, but today I'm gonna to go into some detail with you on how exactly to implement no contact and what steps to take in that space moving forward to protect yourself and begin to heal. There is a variety of things that you can do upon going no contact. For one, you want to make sure that you're out of the environment. You are out of the toxic abusive environment that's been making you sick, that's been making you confused, that's been causing you nothing but harm. And not just you, but possibly your children as well. So that's step one, making sure that you are removing yourself from the toxic environment, whether that be a living situation, a trip that you might be on. We all know how vacations and trips go with narcissists. You might need to go home early from the trip. You might need to remove yourself from whatever the environment, whether you're staying in a hotel with him or you're staying at a friend's house or family member's house with him. You might need to just take yourself out of that environment and from there get to a place that is safe for you to begin sifting through what has taken place, whether it was mental, physical, emotional, whatever type of toxic abuse was going on, this is what you must remove yourself from. The next thing you wanna do is maybe you already have, but if you haven't, reaching out to someone for support that can help validate you in your experience, that can help listen to what's been going on and help you decompartmentalize all of the confusion, the gaslighting, whatever was going on in that situation so that you can understand and grasp the severity of it. Because what happens when we're in these relationships is we become desensitized to their abusive behavior and we don't realize just how bad it is because we're minimizing it and dismissing a lot of the behaviors the same way that they are with their own behaviors. And they're training us to do this, right? They're teaching us how to minimize and dismiss and deny what they're really doing because they're doing it all the time. So they're training us how to do the same thing so that they can continue with their manipulation and control in order to get away with whatever they wanna get away with. So we end up buying into the lies and deception, so to speak. So getting out of this environment and to a safe place with support that you can depend on, that's going to validate you, that's going to hear you, listen to you, believe in what you're sharing, is going to help bring you back into reality and being able to fully grasp what you are dealing with and how to move forward from there. I'm just gonna give you one example from my past experience. The first time, the first time I separated from my ex-husband, I went through a variety of different feelings and emotions around what had taken place in the abuse that I endured from him. And not just the abuse I endured from him, but the abuse that I had also endured from his mother and his children, in particularly one child of his that was an adult at that time. And during that time that we were separated, I was able to see just how bad the abuse was, not just from him, but from his mother as well. For instance, his mom, 
had treated me really poorly in front of a significant group of people, a significant number of people where it was not just evident to me, it was actually very evident to everyone around as well. And they were the ones that helped me come back into reality and tell me, and I'm talking at least a dozen people here who had said to me, I have never witnessed someone so malevolent and cruel to someone for absolutely no rational reason. So not only to me was she the most negative person I had ever met in my entire life from the negativity, the cruelty, and the evil that I was experiencing from her and not just me, but also my children and other people that I knew that she disliked my friends, my family, and other people that didn't even know me personally had brought her behavior towards me to my attention. So it really validated what I was experiencing because when you're in the situation, you want things to be good. I really wanted to have a relationship with this woman. She was my mother-in-law. I wanted us to be able to get along and I did everything in my power to be kind, respectful to her. I actually was never one time rude or disrespectful to her. I was always accepting of her and did everything I could to have a healthy relationship with her. And every effort that I made to do so was rejected and in a very malevolent way. So for me to continue putting myself in that position with my ex-husband not setting hardly any boundaries with this woman, it would have been very irresponsible of me. You cannot continue making efforts with someone that is committed to being against you and being hurtful to you. And this is just who she was as a person. There were people that she loved and then there were people that she hated. There was no medium ground with her. And this is the way that narcissists operate, true narcissists. And my ex-husband was the same way. I mean, he had learned this toxicity from her. This is where it stemmed from. This is the way it is nine out of 10 times with a narcissist. They pick up these toxic behavioral issues from usually a parent or caretaker or whatever environment they're growing up in. So you begin to understand that to the narcissistic abuser, this is normal. It's what they grew up in. And the more space you give yourself to understand and gain more clarity around this, the easier it is for you to set healthy boundaries for yourself and to make healthier decisions moving forward. And when you don't go no contact and you don't create the space for yourself, what ends up happening is you continue to be abused for one, you continue to be gaslit and disoriented because that's the state they want you in in order to have control. And so long as you are in that environment, there's no way possible for you to gain the clarity that you need in order to make healthy decisions for yourself, for the relationship, and for the people around you, such as your children and your family. I still look back at that marriage and am in disbelief over the things that I tolerated, over the way that I was treated by him and by his family. And in most cases, the victim of narcissistic abuse is also victimized by the family, either by secondary abuse, by their enabling behavior, or by them also being abusive as well. Because as I said, the toxicity runs in the family. This is where they learned these traits. And so oftentimes, the abuser will also have children who become abusive as well. And this can be your own children with a narcissistic abuser. And this is why I am such a strong advocate for women getting out of these marriages and relationships, even though they have children together, because you get to step out of it and not condone it 
and teach your children something different about love. You get that opportunity as the other parent and you get to be the chain breaker. You get to be the one who shifts things in a positive, healthy direction for your child's mental and physical well-being. So beyond that, when you finally are able to sift through all of the confusion, come back into a space of reality, of acceptance, and truly beginning to understand and break down everything that you've been experiencing mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually, then you can start making healthy decisions. And these healthy decisions include and begin with healthy boundary setting. After setting these boundaries, you're also going to have to learn how to implement consequences because narcissists only respond to consequences. They are boundary busters. They do not respect boundaries. They do not accept your no. So when you go no contact, they don't accept that. They don't take no for an answer and they're gonna push back and keep pushing until they either get their way or you implement those consequences in order to let them know you are serious. And this can look like having an intervention. And I strongly recommend if you're considering giving him that opportunity to work with a treatment center, such as the Marriage Recovery Center that can help you put together and implement a strategic intervention plan. Or if you are not willing to give him that opportunity to figure out what changes you need to make and what you need to do in order to live the life that you need to be safe without him. And that might look like getting a restraining order or moving and not letting him find out where your new address is. These are important things that women have to really do in real life to get away from these abusers because they are dangerous. Narcissistic abusers can become extremely dangerous and it can end up being a life-threatening situation. So this is something for you to take very seriously and the steps that you take and setting those boundaries and implementing those appropriate consequences so that you and your family can be safe. And as far as an intervention goes, this is another important aspect for you to contemplate and understand before you decide to do this. For example, I had to understand that if I were going to give him this opportunity to go through with an intervention with him, that that meant that I was still committing myself to the marriage and not only committing to my own personal healing, growth, and recovery, but also committed to helping him in his treatment and in his recovery. And then our healing and recovery together in our marriage. So this was a huge decision for me to make, and it will be a huge decision for you to make if this is what you decide to do. And I honestly didn't know what his answer was going to be. I wasn't sure, but I had to come to a place of radically accepting that he might say no, that he might not agree to it, and prepare myself for his no, and prepare myself for his walking away from the marriage and his decision to not go through with the intervention. And then I also had to prepare myself for the chance that he would agree to it and that he would go through with treatment and recovery and not just separately, but also together when the time came. Because you can't heal together until you both receive separate treatment in a separate place and I believe in living in separate homes and separate environments until both of you are in a place where you can come back together, where you are healing through the trauma and he 
has gotten to a place of consistent behavioral change before entering back into the relationship together. So these were the things that I had to prepare myself for when I decided to do the intervention with him. And he rejected it. He denied it. He wanted no part of it. And that was what ended our marriage. And in most cases, they won't end up going through with it. And if they do, it's usually short term. The chances of a narcissistic abuser, especially if they fall under the category of antisocial personality disorder, getting long-term treatment and being committed to long-term treatment is very, very slim. And the outcome of their behavioral changes is also very slim even after receiving long-term treatment. So this is really something that an abuser, a narcissistic abuser, a sociopath, anyone falling under the antisocial personality disorder umbrella, they really need to commit to lifelong treatment. They can't just get six months of treatment or a year of treatment. They need years and years, years and years and being able to implement these behavioral changes consistently throughout the course of time. And again, even saying this to you, it's almost like a hopeless ideal, but God is the God of miracles and he can do anything. However, I also don't want you holding out hope for that because I think what happens is, especially with faith, based thinking, we can get stuck in a very dangerous trap of having false hope. And God does not want us to live in that space. He wants us to live in the freedom of his love and the freedom of his peace. And wherever we can obtain peace, we should seek it. And this is in his word. This is biblical. He does not want us submitting to sin and abusive behaviors. That is not what the word says. And the more time that goes by after having no contact with him, whether you guys are going through an intervention plan or you've decided to move on from the marriage or relationship, the more clarity you gain. The more realizations you come to about the relationship, what went on in the relationship, why you made the decisions that you made, why you reacted the way that you did in certain situations. There are so many things that you come to realize and understand about the trauma that you endured, about the effects of the trauma that you experience after the relationship, there are just so many things to sift through with narcissistic abuse. It is just a whirlwind of things that you have to get through and overcome. And no contact means no contact. It means blocking his phone number, blocking emails, blocking multiple numbers if he creates burner phone numbers. It means blocking him on social media, and he'll probably create multiple accounts on social media that you're gonna have to block. It's block, block, block. Lots of blocking, unfortunately. But that's what you have to do. You have to protect your peace. You have to protect this space of safety that you're trying to create for yourself so that way you can continue growing in that clarity, that understanding, and begin to make healthy choices. And he'll possibly show up at your house. He's going to continue trying to contact you through third party, through other people. This is just what they do. So you will also have to let people know, your friends and your family. If you hear from him, block him. If you see him out in public, I don't want to know about it. Don't tell me. These are boundaries that you need to set for yourself in establishing that no contact space. And in my intervention letter to him, should he have agreed to it, it stated that the only contact that would be acceptable would be from the psychiatrist and psychologist themselves from the treatment center notifying me of his commitment to the program and his progress. But outside of that, 
I had no contact with him moving forward from that. And he did all of the things that I just stated in trying to contact me, showing up at my home, contacting my parents, contacting people that knew me, that knew us. And you just have to be very cut and dry, block and cut off anything, anyone that is going to put you back in contact with him, especially if he is not getting treatment and hasn't shown progressive behavioral changes. And there's a few different things that can help you maintain this because we end up getting caught up in the addictive cycle with the narcissist and being addicted to the relationship. So one thing that was really helpful for me was taking screenshots of some of the worst text messages and emails I had received from him, things that he had said and done to me. And I put them in a file on my phone. And every time I felt weak or vulnerable, like I was wanting to reach out to him or thinking a lot about him, I would open this file up and it would only take me maybe about three or four messages before I closed my phone and was like, no, I'm good. I, I don't wanna have any contact with this person. So it's really helpful to do things like that. Even have a friend that you can call that can kind of remind you of some of the things that maybe he or she witnessed during the relationship. Ways that you felt, things that you went through physically and emotionally to help remind you and keep you grounded so that you can maintain no contact. I hope this helps. And if there's any tools that you've used to stay no contact that I haven't said here, please feel free to put them in the comments to help others. That would be really helpful. And I would love to hear from you. If you like this video, please hit like, subscribe to my channel and take care.